Good morning. Let's start this beautiful morning with prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you. We praise you. We dedicate this day unto you, Lord. What a glorious day. We give you glory and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We're starting John chapter 16. Uh, we're going to read through verse 1 and 11. So this is word of the Lord. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogue. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them and these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go away to him who sent me and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, Parakletos, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he'll convict the world of sin and of the righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Whew. Wow, it was a mouthful. It's talking about Holy Spirit God again, and how Holy Spirit God would come and how he needs to go. Uh, unless he goes, the helper cannot come. And here we could even see the foreshadow of Apostle Paul, because he said, whoever kills you will think that he offer God service. So that's exactly what Apostle Paul thought that he was doing. He thought he was keeping the uh, rules of the Moses law. And what Christians were saying and doing was um, diabolically against Yahweh. And he, he didn't realize Yahweh is Jesus. So the whole story. Uh, so persecution for true Christian, as I already told you, uh, it's real. And if you are not being persecuted, then maybe you have tendency to make peace. And that's a, it does a good thing. The flip side of that is maybe because you are compromising so heavily uh, that the enemy does not really want to provoke you. <laughs> I found this really interesting article. Of course, I completely, completely forgot uh, that this actually took place. Uh, Monday, 1991, December 9th. December 9th, 1991. Uh, the Korean magazine, at the time newspaper, uh, they did the whole article on Korean American Youth Revival drills hundreds. And uh, we did a revival meeting uh, in Glendale area, and I was the speaker. And so they actually reported about this great revival that was, they broke out. Uh, more than 500 Korean Americans gathered at Logos Evangelical Church. And at the time, Kang Jun Min was the pastor at the at the church. And uh, I, the funny thing is, I just had uh, lunch with him a couple of days ago. Kang Jun Min, wow! After thirty years, we're still connected. But anyway, so it was just simple reporting of the religious section, as you could see, religious section about five hundred young people, and they dedicate their life to serve the Lord. And then there was a letter to the editor. Uh, and because this article was a November issue and the editorial uh, ran in December, basically said from a guy named Thomas Beck of Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, he said that this is the greatest evil. 
<laughs> I'll read. I'll just read to you. Religion, like other philosophies or ways of life, worldviews, can mold one's outlook on everything and everyone. If the mold hardens to point, other views or beliefs are considered inferior, then one way window to world becomes a place in the mindset. Evangelical Christian doctrine teaches salvation only through Jesus. The Christianity transcends other world religion. Only Christians go to heaven. You see, I told you the exclusivity of Jesus is offensive to the world. And so I guess he's from Princeton, I guess he, write, he wrote quite well. He's, of course, going against. I hate them because they are saying that Buddha cannot make it, Muslim cannot make it, only Christians will go to heaven. Is a Christianity trans another religion? And so then he writes, if the mind is arranged in this way of thinking and seeing things, then arrogance and intolerance can follow. Uh, 30, years, 30 years ago, the whole tolerance was a huge deal. So he's using all these sociological terms, which was fashionable at the time. What might follow then is the ultimate evil in our society, fanaticism. Those who have entered the domain include Jim Jones, David Duke, Adolf Hitler, Song Myung Moon. I hope no one else like members of this group is being molded today. The danger of grasping so firmly onto any all-encompassing world and life and people view is the gradual closure of one's mind. I fear this danger more than death. Once a mind becomes closed and fertile only to particular calculus of thoughts, ideas, views, and beliefs, then death has already arrived. Oh Lord, I pray that Thomas Beck would encounter you and retract uh, this article in Jesus name. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, if I ever meet him, Thomas Beck, maybe I should look it up in the Google or uh, Facebook. Um, I think I'm going to be a good friend because he has a very clear view. See, unless you have a clear view, we can't really discuss. If you don't have any view, it's like, oh, so what do you think about this? Oh, I don't know. Do you think about it? No, I just, I live, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> so at least he has a view. At least he hates Christian because of what we believe. Most people say, oh, that's good for you. And I'm going to believe what I believe. I don't want to fight you. Okay. So here, when the Holy Spirit comes, uh, oh, no, when Jesus says, don't, don't worry when people persecute you because um, they persecuted me. You know, I taught that in uh, John 15, 18 through 27. Persecution is coming, so don't worry about it. And if you really live according to God's plan and follow Christ, of course you'll be persecuted. I mean, Jesus was persecuted. And to say that, well, I'm not going to be persecuted. I'm just going to keep peace. Jesus was Prince of Peace, man. So I'm just going to keep peace at all costs. If you are bent in peacemaking, good for you up to a certain point. Right? Uh, make sure that you stand by truth and try to keep peace. Don't say that, well, I want to keep peace. So I don't want to say Jesus is the only way. So that's the only way I'm going to keep peace with Muslims and Buddhists and other religions, you know, especially New Age, you know, and intellectuals who insist that Christians are bigots, well, I always tell them, if you really believe in diversity, let me keep mine. Don't insist on your diversity as absolute. Then you become absolutist. No, I'm a relativist. Everything's subjective. Really? Okay. Let me keep my subjective truth. And that's my view. And my view says that Jesus is the only way. And for you not to deal with that philosophically is your issue, you know. Um, persecution will come because of the fundamental difference. Well, Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus has been saying over and over again, you know, John 5.26. We're in John 16 right now. John 5.26, Jesus said, when the helper comes, that is a spirit of truth, and he will bear witness of me. Wow. John 6.7, Jesus must go in order that helper comes, and he's continually 
uh, hinting, telling, <laughs> right? And then he says, well, um, Jesus would actually, um, con the Holy Spirit will do these things. He says that it will guide you. The Holy Spirit, when he comes, let me see, 6.13, John 6.13. We have time, don't we? John 6, 13. Says, therefore, uh, John 6, I'm sorry, John 16, 13. Uh, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. So not only... Uh, actually, I made a mistake with my 1987 notes here. It's John 16, 13, 16, 14. So what, what would Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit, uh, and when I say John 5, 26, it's 15, 26, 16, 7. John 16, 7, Jesus must go in order to help her comes. Yeah. That's what I just read. So nevertheless, I need to go for helper to come. But when he comes, what's the duty? He's going to guide you. John 16, 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority. Wow. And this is important, and I mean, we could we we could uh, learn about this in real life. Two thousand years ago, what happens when Holy Spirit made touchdown? In Acts chapter one, four, five, Jesus promised the Holy Spirit will come. Jesus comes with authority, dunamis one eight, and then chapter two, one through four, Holy Spirit came through the tongue of fire. Right, Acts two, the fire comes upon them and they broke out and they broke into a uh, different tongue and Peter start preaching this powerful message. 3,000 come to know Christ. Acts 2, 14 through 36. Remember we learned that Jesus stood up and start bearing witness of Jesus Christ. He says, you know, remember he said, I denied him three times, but now he stands up. He's God. He's son of God. He's the Messiah that you killed. That, you know, so John 526, he's talking about that. And the duty of the Holy Spirit, because people who heard Peter's preaching wanted to be saved, 3,000 came to know Christ. That's what Holy Spirit does. Just like Jesus, the Savior, Holy Spirit is the Spirit of saving. So when Holy Spirit manifests, that God's going to start uh, have people dedicate, give their life to the Lord. And so something like this happens. 500 Korean American kids were there 30 years ago. If these kids were 15, they will be 55 right now, right? These 15 year olds or 45 right now, 30, yeah, 45 right now. If they were 20, they'll be 50. So these kids who came to our meeting, four churches got together and powerful stuff happened, you know, and, and they said, I want to encounter Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit, God is the one reside and, and touch and minister. Jesus and God is up in the heaven. So it was the work of the Holy Spirit that glorifies Jesus, Acts 2, 26. Like, man, you know, and, and the, 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 the disciples realized, wait a minute, you know, probably John and all the disciples sitting down listening to Peter go, what happened to him? Wow, powerful stuff. He's articulating who Jesus is. And, and he said, wow, now we could actually uh, uh, have another disciples like Jesus was our master and we were his disciples. I think we need to lead these people, disciple them to follow Jesus, right? And how do we do that? There's that presence of the Holy Spirit that, that feels so familiar, why? Because it's the spirit of Jesus. It's in them. And they're saying that, I think Jesus is with me. 
That's what he was saying. I am in God, God is in me, I'm in you and you are in me. Like, wow, right? And I'm telling you, if when Holy Spirit manifests and when I meet someone, it doesn't matter which country, Muslim country, I mean, you know, jungles of Indonesia or, uh, I mean, in Ethiopia, we are in the, the scary place in Muslim area in Ethiopia, right? And Kenya uh, was in, was it Kenya or Ethiopia? Shashamane, where the Bob Marley was born and was a pretty scary place. Actually, we, a bunch of the pastors were harassed and their, their uh, things robbed, you know, like phones and wallets were robbed. They were trying to witness to this village. They all went out and then they got mobbed. And so place like that. And, but, and yet when we meet spirit-filled Christians, it's like, it doesn't matter what ethnic background, what age, what gender. And it's like, there is connect connection. Jesus is here. Jesus wants to be glorified. And when we worship together, I mean, they do in their own culture, dancing, joy, we celebration. Um, but there is that witness. Yes, Jesus is here in the form of Holy Spirit. And that's what Jesus is saying, that you recognize that. And you remind you, and just like I guided you, led you like a shepherd. Holy Spirit, God is the shepherding spirit. So he'll guide you and lead you. He'll never abandon you. Amen. Amen. December 28th. Tuesday. Let us finish well. We got a few more days of this year. Let's finish well. Let, let's go with God. Amen. In Jesus' name. See you tomorrow. Mwah.